Hi there, I'm Nafis Salatic and this is Across the Balkans. There is a disturbing and many would argue dangerous trend of historical revisionism spreading in the former Yugoslav republics. There have been apparent attempts to both cast doubt on crimes committed during the Bosnian war and re-evaluate the man responsible. A mural in Serbia's capital now celebrates Ratko Mladic, who was convicted of genocide in Srebrenica. We'll bring you that story from Belgrade later in the show. But first, Croatia's president Zora Milanovic is under fire for remarks that seem to question whether Srebrenica really was a genocide. Have a listen. To je sud utvrdio, ali ne treba mi utvrđenje suda, dakle to vidimo, to znam, nikakav sud ne može biti sve to pismo. Međunarodni sud. 5.000 ili 8.000 ljudi, 80.000 ljudi nije isto. Nije isto da se nešto dogodi u dva dana, pa se onda pokušava zamaskirati ili se događa kontinuirano i sistemski. Nije isto da se događa u plinskim komorama ili se događa sa mačetama. Dakle, postoje razlika. The condemnation of Zoran Milanovic's comments are growing, including from the victim's mothers in neighboring Bosnia and Herzegovina. There, denying the Srebrenica genocide is illegal. The former high representative introduced the law before the end of his term. And it triggered a political crisis when Bosnian Serb leaders started boycotting state institutions in protest. An initiative to annul the genocide denial law was also supported by Bosnia's main ethnic Croat party, Democratic Union. Many now are worried that the Croatian president's remarks will increase tensions even more. The Bosniak member of the presidency says Milanovic's statement is embarrassing and inadmissible, while his predecessor says relativizing this issue is insulting to the victims. Mnogo govori za jednog predsjednika i mislim da bi bilo bolje da manje govori, a da više razmisli prije nego što neke stvari kaže. Jer znate, govoriti o užasnim zločinima, o genocidima, poraditi to, relativizirati, to su odveć bolne stvari da bi se o tome olako pričalo. Evo, čuli smo sada da se tu relativizira, da se tu poređuje genocid u Srebrenici, da li je neki genocid veći, da li je neki manji koliko je šta trajalo. Mislim da to jednostavno ne treba raditi, to vrijeđa ljude, to vrijeđa žrtve. The chairperson of the Bosniak ethnic minority in Croatia was among the first to react to the Croatian president's remarks, saying Milanovic crossed a red line. His name is Armin Hodžić and he is our guest today. Armin, thanks so much for coming in on the show. I want to start by asking, how did Milanovic's statement impact you personally? How did it make you feel? First of all, uh, all citizens in Croatia, not only from the Bosniak national minority, but all of them, like Croats, Serbs and everyone, are shocked with the statements of President Zoran Milanovic. Not only with the statements about genocide in Srebrenica, but all of them that he has uh, during, let's say, last month. But uh, like a member of Bosniak national minority in Croatia, I'm uh, shocked and disappointed with the statements of President Milanovic, especially because he is the uh, politician who is in the last 15 years, uh, he has uh, a lot of positions like Prime Minister of Croatia, like a president of the uh, big uh, political party SDP in Croatia. And uh, he didn't have, uh, let's say, this kind of uh, rhetoric. He started uh, uh, before a few days with these statements about uh, Srebrenica. I don't know why and uh, for uh, which aim, but uh, right. this is the new point in Croatian politics about uh, genocide in Srebrenica. And let's say we are pretty worried about uh, these statements. Right. And what part of his statement did you find the most problematic? What stood out the most uh, for you? Uh, it's uh, two of them. The first one, he's downplaying the scale of genocide and he's downplaying the uh, court uh, judgments about the genocide in Srebrenica. And the second one, it's uh, that he said uh, not all victims are the same. And he compared the uh, genocide in Srebrenica with uh, genocide in Jasenovac or with the Holocaust. Uh, I don't know 
what's the point uh, with that kind of rhetoric, but it's unacceptable to say that not all uh, victims are the same. And uh, I don't know what that means, because it probably in uh, his mind means that uh, the people, the victims of genocide in Srebrenica, are, they don't have the same value like the Jews in the Holocaust or something like that. But it's pretty shocked to, to, to hear from the president of the state that kind of messages to the society in Croatia and to all citizens, and especially to the Bosniaks. In this moment, when uh, Croatian side discussing the changing of election law in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and as you see, um, the leader of Bosnian Serbs in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, Milorad Dodik, uh, he is thankful to the president Milanovic for these statements about genocide in Srebrenica right. and all other. You said in one occasion that Milanovic regards Bosniaks as people who are only fit to work on building sites and make cevapi. That's a Bosnian grilled uh, minced meat dish, very famous, especially in Sarajevo. Uh, explain to us your remarks and what made you think like that? Because this is not the first statement in um, this type, in this style of rhetoric about Bosniaks, uh, and especially about Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, every time when uh, President Milanovic is talking about some, let's say, village or some uh, rural place, he said, this is like Prnjavar. Uh, Prnjavar is one small city in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But that means that he thinks about uh, Prnjavar like something that is synonym for bad place. Uh, the same thing, it's uh, before a few years in the political, in the... Um, election campaign in 2016, there was one meeting uh, between uh, Croatian ex-soldiers uh, or Croatian veterans from Homeland War with um, Zoran Milanovic, and they recording uh, that uh, meeting. And uh, Milanovic said on that meeting, he didn't know that that was uh, re recorded. Um, he said, like, the Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's big we don't have uh, anyone to talk uh, in, uh, in Bosnia, and uh, if uh, Bosnia has been separated, I will not allow to Croats to stay in some kind of state with, together with Bosnia. Lots of reaction on social media too. One of the survivors of the war, Arnesa Buljushmic Kustura, tweeted downplaying and minimizing genocide, which is par for the course in the Balkans. But Milanovic's statements, uh, while not shocking, are dangerous. Uh, would you say that Milanovic's statement is pointing to a bigger problem of the rise of genocide denial led by Bosnian Serb leaders that have, we've seen uh, in the region in recent weeks? Yes, because this this uh, this kind of statements are like some support to the rhetoric of Milorad Dodik. It's like support to the policy of uh, Bosnian Serbs in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And uh, as you know, that uh, official policy of uh, Bosnian Serbs in Bosnia and Herzegovina is that a Srebrenica is not genocide; it's some kind of massacre of some kind of war crime or something like that. Because uh, Republika Srpska, as, uh, as part of the Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, they uh, let let's say get uh, from Dayton, uh, be legitimized from uh, genocide and ethnic cleansing in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, especially in this moment uh, after the Insko law in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I don't uh, see any uh, positive uh, reactions from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, especially from Croatia, because if you saw the uh, statements of Prime Minister Plenković, he immediately said no uh, official policy of Croatia is that in the right. Srebrenica was a genocide. Yes. I and mean, that I that's actually, uh, right, I actually do want to bring in the Croatian Prime Minister Andrei Plenković, who visited Bosnia just this week. And let's hear uh, together what he had to say about the relations between the two countries. I came here to represent Croatia and as a friend and a partner. I came to improve cooperation and to send a message of the importance of Bosnia's integrity and equality of all three constituent people in Bosnia and all other citizens.
very different rhetoric from Plenković. There he also said that Croatia will continue to monitor the situation in Bosnia and that his country is against any separatist tendencies that might occur. Now, how would you describe Croatia's policy towards Bosnia? To which extent should Croatia's officials be involved in solving the current crisis in Bosnia, in your opinion? Yes, it's a different uh, style of rhetoric than President Milanovic, but uh, when you saw the content of the message from uh, Prime Minister Plenković and from President Milanovic, is the same one. Uh, they want uh, the changing of election law, they want uh, different rights for the Croats inside the Bosnia and Herzegovina. He only strongly uh, said that uh, official creation policy is that in the Srebrenica was genocide because he un deeply understand the implications in European Union if uh, creation of official policy is that like supporting the rhetoric and policy of Milorad Dodik. And in um, one segment, he said something like, um, in defense to the to the president Milanovic, like uh, he also thinks that uh, in uh, Serbia was genocide, uh, because uh, he probably don't want uh, to look like someone who using the uh, some uh, foreign policy to uh, for the struggle with uh, President uh, Zoran Milanovic, because as you know, there is a big struggle between uh, two of them. And, last few years after the the last parliament uh, elections uh, in Croatia they are in the in the strong battle two, two of them Andrei Plenković and Zoran Milanović but uh, 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 let's say when uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, it's uh, issue they have the same view of the policy of Croatia uh, and the foreign policy in uh, about Bosnia and Herzegovina is strongly influenced by uh, Croatian politicians from Mostar, from HDZ, and from Dragan Čović. And that is the, let's say, uh, in my opinion, uh, bad thing for, for Croatian policy because uh, Croatian foreign policy need to be independent from any kind of uh, influence from Croatian politicians from Mostar or for any other source of influence. Armin, and just briefly, a couple of months ago, uh, we did a show about Croatia's uh, Muslim community and how the EU member is often held as a model um, of how well Muslim minorities can be a seamless part of European uh, society. What has changed in Croatia since then? And how would you describe the position of Bosniaks uh, in Croatia at the moment? Let's say like this, nothing is changed, but there is one difference. It's difference between uh, religious community and uh, with national community. Because uh, let's say like this, in uh, Croatia, it's easy to be Muslim. You have Moscow, you have Islamic gymnasium, you have every religious right uh, that you need. But when we are discussing about national segment and that it's a politics, it's different. Uh, because, as you see, uh, the Croatian uh, foreign policy number one is Bosnia and Herzegovina. And because of that, they have uh, a lot of issues with the uh, Bosniaks, not only in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also in Croatia. And we have right to have a member of Croatian parliament who will be representative of Bosniaks, Albanians and other national minorities. But uh, we don't have uh, our own Bosniak uh, member the last six years. Uh, we are represented from the Albanian uh, member. So because of that, our, uh, our political uh, position and uh, situation is bad. Uh, but uh, Croatian uh, law are uh, good in the way that uh, it's giving a lot of rights to the national minorities and to religious minorities. But okay. uh, one, one more time, I want to say there is a big difference be uh, between a re religious community and national community. Okay. Armin, uh, thank you so much for being a guest and for your insight. Armin Hodžić there in Zagreb for us. 
As we've discussed, Srebrenica was ruled a genocide by the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. And that court at The Hague found Ratko Mladic responsible. The Bosnian Serb general was one of the most notorious war criminals from the conflict in the 90s. Now, his face is on the facade of a building in Belgrade. Scuffles broke out last month between ultra-nationalists and activists who vowed to paint over it. Serbian police blocked access to the mural and detained several activists. Now, Serbia's perceived commitment to justice and reconciliation is now on the line, with authorities being criticized for defending the man widely blamed for committing Europe's worst crimes since World War II. For several weeks now, a question has dominated debate in the region. Will the government allow murals that honor convicted war criminals? As Axel Zajmovic reports from Belgrade, residents who live in the neighborhood say all the companies they contacted have refused to help them remove it. It was a scuffle between nationalists and activists. Things quickly escalated, even plainclothes police stepped in. And it was all triggered by a piece of street art that celebrates a war criminal. The controversial graffiti has exposed a chasm in society. I think that uh, Serbia is more and more is a criminal state. I'm Axel Zajmovic. I'm in Belgrade to find out why Serbia is becoming increasingly polarized. At first glance, it looks just like a regular graffiti you'd see sprayed on walls around Belgrade. But it's a tribute to Ratko Mladic a notorious war criminal responsible for genocide and crimes committed during the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina in the 90s. The mural went up in July after a UN court upheld Mladic's lifetime sentence. The graffiti prompted a public outcry. Meet Aida Chorovic. She's a civil activist on a mission to take it down. Mainstream. Her friend Jelena is an illustrator and guerrilla activist. Just like Aida, she wanted to express her outrage. Ovde nemamo ni dozvolu stanara, ni neki, neku dozvolu grada, opštine. U ovom konkretnom slučaju, a to možemo prenesemo sve druge primere, e, nemamo pristanak ničiji, e, imamo zaštitu policije i jedan okupirani zid. Ja sam utrčala u radnju koja je iza nas bila. Jedino što mi u tom trenutku pao na pamet su jaja, drugo, niti imamo neku farbaru u blizini, ni... Videli smo da ima puno policije i videli smo neke mladiće u civilu sa fantom sa sa tim jak sa kapuljačama, jaknama, kačketima i ja sam bila ubeđena da se radi o desničarskim grupama i mislili smo da ipak neće reagovati brutalno, da je tu ipak policija, da je tu dovoljno medija i da ćemo biti u tom smislu zaštićene i samo smo se zaletele i gađale mural sa nekoliko jaja. Da li je realno pre ljudi? Ono što je usledilo je bilo nešto što ja nisam verovala da ni u najgore onako filmu da će se desiti i ti mladići su skočili na nas sobe. Došlo je do prekomene upotrebe sile i jednostavno to nije bilo neophodno. Ovaj, oni su mogli procen situaciju kao prosto eto, neki prekršaj se desio, nisu morali na dve žene da upotrebe toliku silu. A idu je do mene odluklo njih troje. <laughs> Aida and Jelena were eventually detained and released later. But the mural was clean and five months on still remains intact. 
The Interior Ministry says police were not protecting the mural, but maintaining public order. Even the country's president, Aleksandr Vucic, was adamant. Aida and Jelena's ordeal may seem trivial, but it exposes a bleak reality. I think that uh, Serbia is more and more is a criminal state. Criminal state in strong uh, connection between ignorance and criminal structures. Janja Beć Neumann is a sociologist and a Nobel Peace Prize nominee. She says the root cause of visible tributes like the Mladic mural is the ruling elite. We have now in the street what is visible uh, very young people, I suppose under 18, we could say uh, child soldiers of the project. This is state project, denying in state project. And uh, they are uh, screaming Ratko Mladic hero. And they are from underground, mostly criminal or half criminal underground and paid from state of Serbia. They are financed by state of Serbia and they are screaming about the same words and the same what the government and government institutions in Serbia are saying in low voice, undertoned. And they are just a voice of the state of Serbia. The Serbian Progressive Party led by Aleksandar Vucic has been in power since 2012. They say they are committed to European values but critics accused them of reviving the nationalist ideology of the 90s. U trenutku kad Aleksandar Vučić praktično potpunu vlast preuzima, on pokazuje svoju suštinu, a to je da je on jedan autoritarni nacionalista, huligan, čovek koji je potekao iz takvog jednog miljeja i on sada radi upravo sve ono što je što je njegova ono autentična unutrašnjost i to na kraju krajeva i približavanje ka Kini, ka Rusiji, negde njemu je sigurno njegovom habitu su bliže nego nego evropske vrednosti. Da je svaki dan neprijatan od kada ustaneš do kad ne legneš, neprijatan je odlazak na posao, neprijatno što nemaš pare da platiš račune, neprijatno je to što ne znaš šta da radiš sa decom. Ne znaš da li ćeš da odeš odavde, da li ćeš da ostaneš, isplati li se. Ljudi su sputani. Mislim da su ljudi, osim toga što su podeljeni, u stvari mislim da je simptom strah, a da je sva ta podeljenost posledica. But why do many young Serbs follow a trend towards ultranationalism? Đorđo Zujević is an activist and aspiring politician. He also tried to paint over the mural in an attempt to challenge that perception. He says young Serbs have a false picture of the events of the past. Ovde se sa druge strane radi o mlađim generacijama koji nisu bili ni rođeni u vreme kada se sve to dešavalo na prostoru u bivšoj Jugoslaviji. Oni su putem novih tehnologija, društvenih mreža, putem savremenih nivoa komunikacije u toj meri indoktrinirani da su stvari, oni treba da budu cilj našeg usmerenja i sa njima trebamo da radimo. Zato što u njihovom svetu putem plasiranja na nov način nekih stvari koje su desile pre dve ili tri decenija, u njihovom svetu to su neki heroji. There is no doubt that there is a hike in hate speech. Some believe it highlights a failure to address past wrongs. Serbia is deeply traumatized. Deeply traumatized because Serbia in military terms, lost four wars. Kosovo, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Slovenia. And uh, deep, such big uh, military defeats. And in the same time, it's paranoid to say we are heroes, our hero, they are defending us. This is, it's, it's really paranoid. Problem post-jugoslovenskih država jeste taj što se mi praktično ni jednog trenutka nismo ozbiljno suočili s prošlošću. Ja sada pre svega govorim o Srbiji. Mi smo upozoravali da moramo da jasno i glasno kažemo šta je odgovornost srpskih političkih elita, vojske, policije, parapolicije, paravojske za ono što se 90-ti dešavalo u okruženju, jer smo znali da će ti isti zločinci jednog dana doći ovde i pošto će im se smanjiti okruženje i manevarski prostor za ubijanje i pljačku, da će to raditi u Srbiji. I sada se to dešava. Sada se to dešava. Ko to ne razume i ko ne razume vrednosti 
i promociju ratnih zločina onda zaista ne razume mnogo ozbiljnije, čak ne ne samo političke procese, nego društvene procese. But can Serbia distance itself from a dark past and move on? Serbia alone itself cannot go through without support from outside. Serbia itself has no strength and has no courage to do that because the crime was too big. Država se vole neki drugi način. Patriotizam je isto nešto se ispolja neki drugi način. To je nešto što svi treba prosto da preuzimamo tom antifašističkom borbom i tako dalje. Tako da država ne bi trebala i ne sme da nastaje ratovima. To je jezivo, mislim. I ne može da se voli to, ne mogu se vole ljudi koji su dozvolili da drugi ljudi umiru. But for now, it seems even removing graffiti from a wall may be too hard a task to fulfill. Perhaps because it resurrected ghosts from the past that have been thriving in the shadows. Axel Zajmović, TRT World, Belgrade. Thanks for watching this episode of Across the Balkans. From me and the team, bye-bye for now and see you next time.